Good morning. We're going to let the kiddos find their way back in here. And if you need to get a drink or go to the restroom before we get started, now is a good time to do that. And seeing this lady, Miss Patsy, we're just so blessed to have you back. Thank you. Amen. And so if y'all just want to... Um, you know, finish up getting your coffee and we'll start here in just a minute. snowing here like it was in Edmond. When I left Edmond, it was pouring down snow. Really? Yep, coming down really good and hard. And um, Yeah, so I was thinking, you know, wow, isn't it crazy how just a few miles can make a difference in what the, in what the weather looks like, you know? It can be snowing just a few miles from here and here, it's not snow, and it just kind of made me think about my own life, you know. You can look at a situation in your life, and then 10 miles down the road, you, you turn around and look back, and you go, wow, it, nothing looks the same anymore, you know. <laughs> and so I'm grateful for that. The scripture I had this morning was out of Hebrews 11, 11 where faith is the confidence that we, what we hope for will actually happen is a different version. Hebrews 11 word. And so I just want to give you some encouragement this morning with your faith. I pray that the Lord touches you and blesses your heart. 
And uh, we are so blessed to have this lady back with us over here. Let me tell you. Yes, I know you are. We sure pray for you and miss you. And you have such a sweet spirit and just, you know, we just love you. And so we're, we're glad that, to see you back and Amen. keep praying for her. She's still healing. Yes. Um, you know, it takes time for facial injuries to heal. And so we're still praying for you. Yes, yes. But it's good to have you on the keys today. Yes. Father, we welcome you into this place this morning, Father. Father, we thank you that we have breath in our lungs today, so we have a purpose. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the joy that's coming in our lives. Father, we thank you for for the giving us faith in this season, Lord, to believe in the things that we haven't seen yet, but we know that you told us. Thank you, Lord, for giving us strength and grace in this season, Father. Father, we worship you. Amen. He can turn any situation into graves, from, into gardens. So whatever circumstance you're going through, he can do it for you. We're going to worship the Lord. I search the world.
just so cool how the Spirit can lead in a service without even talking. And so He can He can lead you in your life and those things that He puts in your heart, He can bring those to fruition. So the song you were singing on your way to church might be the one that starts playing because he's singing that over you. Thank you, Lord. You're worthy of it all.
got some sort of upper respiratory uh, thing going on. Julie Campbell, which is Mark's mom, Mark is working uh, today, so he's not here, but we're still praying for his mother. Yes. The breast cancer, you know, it was uh, when they went in there to get the cancer, um, they told her she wouldn't have to have chemo or radiation. So that's a that's a good idea. Amen. Amen. And we're still praying for Kay Friesen. We're waiting to hear back on some tests that she had run. You know, they were also throwing around the cancer word. Rhonda, you're here this morning. We've been praying for you. Yes. Yes. Rhonda's been a sick lady. And uh, I'm happy to see you this morning. Yes, amen. And like I said, we're still praying for Bob and Patsy. Patsy, it's so good to see you here this morning. I know God is going to touch your body. Norman Fair, Glenda Ivy, we're still praying for Glenda. And uh, Caden Lowry, which is Rhonda's son, we're praying that God uh, move in his situation. God knows every need in that area. Yes, amen. Sheila, Sheila Moore, she hasn't been able to come in a while. She's been sick as well. Pat and family. Roy, you're here, but we're still praying for Pat. Yes. Sue, we're praying for Sue. The Easter family. Carolyn Daniel, we're still lifting you up in prayer. Carol, we're... Carol Wheeler, we're still praying for you. Yes. Glad to see you here this morning. Faith Dunlap and Clyde L, we're praying for you, and you're here yes. this morning. Yes. Yeah. We're still praying for Bobby Walker. You know, she's still in quarantine. There's just so many. I mean, I could keep going on and on and on. And if you would pray for me, too, um, you know, I told you guys a couple weeks ago that I got an invitation to go to the Philippines to do a worship thing which is so crazy to me to be invited to go to that and I just I really want to I really want to go and I just want God's direction on how to get me there because <laughs> I don't want to travel all across the world by myself and without money you know <laughs> you need those things so just pray for direction for me um so I can make that trip but um if you have a need this morning you're more than welcome to come up here and we're going to pray for you and um And um, we're just going to pray for these needs real quick. And if you have a prayer, like I said, you can come on down. Father, you know every single need that I mentioned, and you know the needs that I didn't mention, Father. There are many in our church, Father, suffering from physical needs this morning, Father. There are many people needing a touch on their physical bodies, Father. And we pray right now, Father, whether they're watching online or here in person, God, that you touch their bodies. Father, heal them. Father, we pray for all of those who are going through cancer, Father. Let you touch their bodies, Father, in a special way, Father. May their trials be turned into testimonies, Father. May their turnaround shock their doctors. I'm going to ask for big things because I know you can do it. Father, I ask that you restore families this season, Father. Families who are going, that are going through crazy, crazy things this season, Father. I know it many situations going on, Father, with whether it's drugs involved or financial difficulties or um, runaway children. We have so many things going on, Father, but you know that you are the great way maker and the promise keeper. You can restore our families this season. Father, thank you, Lord, for touching those dealing with addictions and mental disorders, Father, this morning. Father, we pray that they have an encounter with you that changes them forever. May they never go back. Father, we thank you for those of us that have come up here for prayer, Lord. Touch them. Thank <laughs> you. 
goes forward. You are worthy. You're faithful.
doesn't really register with us uh, because we think that's beyond our ability to comprehend it and in some ways it is but because he is holy and there is, uh, the reason why I say that is because there is not another one like him Amen. in the universe Amen. he is holy uh-huh. and so we worship him if there is anything that you need and it doesn't exist now he'll he promised to meet your needs but if there's anything that you need and it doesn't exist, he is a holy God. He goes beyond the natural. He is able to create out of nothing something that you may need that you don't think it's going to come from anybody, anywhere, anytime. Because he's a holy God. You might even say that word holy. You could add a, another definition to it. W-H-O-L-E. Whole. He's complete. There's not anything lacking in the nature of who God is. Nothing. He lacks nothing. Amen. He is a holy God. And as a holy God, he promises to walk with you. Thank you, Father. Is there anything bigger than that? Is there anything greater than that? No. There's not anything greater than that. Wow. I'm just looking through some scriptures here. What shall we say that Abraham, our forefather, discovered in this matter of faith? Abraham was justified. Was Abraham justified by works? He had something to boast about, but not before God. It wasn't works. What does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was accredited unto him for righteousness. When a man works, his wages are not credited to him as a gift, but as an obligation. However, to the man who does not work, but trusts God, who justifies the wicked, his faith is credited to him as righteousness, the grace of God. David says the same thing when he speaks of the blessedness of the man to whom God credits righteousness apart from works. If you're trying to be big enough to do it yourself, Stop. Amen. You have one who walks with you who is bigger than the circumstances you're facing. That's right. And he is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that is at work within us. Wow. It was not through law that Abraham and his offspring received the promise that he would be heir of the world. But through the righteousness that comes through faith. For if those who live by the law are heirs, faith has no value and the promise is worthless because law brings wrath. And where there is no law, there is no transgression. Therefore, the promise comes by faith so that it may be by grace and may be guaranteed to all Abraham's offspring. That's us. Not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of faith of Abraham. He is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God, in whom he believed in God, who gives life to the dead and calls things that are not as though they are. Don't say, I'm not big enough. Well, yeah, we're not. But who's standing with us? He's bigger than than that. He's greater than that. He says, he is our father in the sight of God, in whom he believed the God who gives life to the dead calls things that are not as though they are. Against all hope, Abraham in hope believed, and so became the father of many nations. Against all hope. He believed and gave, 
and became the father of many nations. He couldn't see how it was going to happen. You may not be able to see how it's going to happen. But God's bigger than that. God is bigger than, than our unbelief. Sermon number one. Got another one coming up here shortly. God is at work in the church. He's at work in you individually. Yes. He's at work in your family. He's a God who cares. He's a God who loves you. You and I are his children and members of his family. If you, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? You say, I'm not worthy? You're right, we're not. But he does it through Christ. Through the blood of Jesus. Yeah. Jesus has conquered it all. Yeah. Rest in that gift that God has given you this morning. Receive that gift that God has given you this morning. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Brother David is going to come and wait on us as we worship the Lord in the giving of tithes and offerings. God bless you as you're faithful to give each week. And God is meeting the need and we're so grateful for what God is doing. As he blesses you abundantly, he says, Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together. Shall men give into your bosom. It's pressed down and shaken together. It's more than you can think. It's abundant that God wants to do in our life. We can do so much more with God, with God in us and with us than we can do by ourselves. God says, I'll walk with you in your finances as you honor me first. He says, that, that offering, that tithe is mine. It belongs to me. So you honor him. You come and bring that tithe offering. Brother David, would you pray? Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for everything that you do for us. Lord, take this offering and multiply it. In Jesus' name, the congregation said, Amen. 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 Praise God. He took my sins away. Hymn of the church. Love this old song. Let's sing. Amen.
Yeah. yeah. Put that in on your bathroom mirror and on your kitchen cabinets. Yeah, when we pray, that's what that what hap that's what happens. That's what happens. Okay, women's prayer is Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Yeah. Uh, Word and worship is Wednesdays, uh, 7 o'clock p.m. Join us for midweek inspiration. Okay? Amen. Ladies, there were four of us that made it to the life rally uh, Friday night. Y'all know that we gave $2,500 last year? Yeah. yeah. Well, we upped our pledge. <laughs> it's all kinds of missions giving. Last year, our our feature project, um, we gave to provide fresh water to hundreds of thousands of people in Africa. It was these water filters that could provide for a, a family of like 10 clean drinking water for 10 years. And it only cost $25 a unit. I mean, can you imagine? And I mean, Yes. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. And that doesn't that doesn't count all of the other missions projects that we supported too. We've got two teen challenge centers that we support on a monthly basis. Um, uh, one is in Disney and one is in Shakota. And we got to hear from some of the missionaries that that we support at the district. One lady, she and her husband and family, children have been in China for over 40 years. And they were there when COVID hit. And they were in lockdown in their apartment and they had to get food dropped down to them with a basket on rope. And they had to watch their, they had these phones that they had to watch. And if it was green, they could stay in their apartment. Yeah, everybody had GPS on them, even their children. They were monitoring their children. And then they said, um, if it was yellow, then somebody in that, you had been exposed somehow to COVID. Maybe something in your food, I don't know. And then if it was red, they were coming for you. Yeah. And so then during the last two years, God has been speaking to them that they would be going to be doing something different. And it took them six months to be able to leave China. Not only is it almost impossible to get into China as a foreign person, but it's impossible to get out. <laughs> so, and they couldn't really communicate very much with other people because it is such a sensitive uh, country. And we have a missionary that our church supports, um, Michelle Castle. She's in a sensitive country. And so we can't post. Uh, she, she has a private Facebook page, and I'm on that. But we can't blast her name around because they're monitoring things, and she would not be able to stay in that country. And she's witnessing and just doing daily life with them, inviting them over, and then they ask questions. And she is allowed to answer questions. She just can't bring up Jesus. <laughs> and at Easter time, they did an Easter egg hunt, and of course somebody wanted to know, well, what is this all about? Well, <laughs> you know, so it's, it's really, they have these uh, centers that children can come after school, and the moms come and sit and visit. And anyways, we support her every month, and we have two other missionaries that we support. So, but it was, it was awesome. So, um, we're going to be doing some fundraisers, and I think we decided that maybe the first one is we're going to get us some chickens and we're going to sell eggs. <laughs> you think we can get some money? <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, just reading your bulletin, some ideas that we've got. <laughs> okay. Uh, we, we did really well with that garage sale that we had, so we're not doing that again, but <laughs> we, we gave all that stuff away. So, Okay. Uh, Jonas Church. Next Sunday is your children's church store. And remember, you can get 100 points. If you didn't already do it, you can go back after church real quick. Help Miss Linda clean up your mess, okay? 
Oh, that's right, you haven't come back there yet. You, you were having this. Hey. Carl's here, isn't he? He is here. There he's, he is. He had surgery and he's back he's at He's sleeping. Church. He's on pain medicine. Oh, he's on, <laughs> he's on pain medicine, though he's asleep on the bench. <laughs> but that's that's awesome that he came today. Yeah, it was. it's great to have you here, Carl, in your dreams. Okay, so we're going to dismiss our kids. I think that's it. Is that all the announcements? Yep. Yep, that's pastor scripture. Kids, you're free to go. And that precious little girl back there on the back row. Little Clementine back that's there. That's Clementine back there. And she was praising the Lord. That's Roy and grandpa. Patricia's grand, uh, great granddaughter. And so good to see everybody here. Worshiping you there. Amen. Mm. Now that winter's here, y'all know about the Walmart test, right? When, it, when we have snow days and stuff, here's, here's how you know if it's okay to go to church. If you could, if you would go out to Walmart, then it's okay to come to church. Right? Yeah, okay. If it's too dangerous to go to Walmart, you don't come to church. <laughs> but no, actually, if our parking lot is dangerous, then we don't have you come. Okay, we don't want anybody falling. All right, thank you so much for uh, the music ministry today, Sister Bed and, and Melody. Great time, and we're worshiping the Lord here with, with the family of God. Amen. Amen. Appreciate you guys so much. And Peter in the back, uh, helping us with the overheads and with everything else. Patsy's here. And Patsy helping Yay. us today. It's been, been a real blessing. Yes. Praise God. Yes. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16 says, Therefore, we do not lose heart. Now, this is not the one on, on the overhead right now. Therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles, you ever call your troubles light and momentary? The Bible does. The people that he's writing to were in the midst of, of the darkness, of murder, destruction, discouragement, terrible acts against one another. Anger, hate, bitterness. Well, we see a lot of that today in the world. But he says, for our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. Amen. It far outweighs. Did you ever think about your, your troubles as momentary and light and they out? But God is achieving for us through them, an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Now we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. Meanwhile, we groan, longing to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling. Yes. Because when we are clothed, we shall not be found naked. For while we are in this tent, we groan in our burden because we do not wish to be unclothed, but to be clothed with the heavenly dwelling. So that which is what, what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. With so many abundant blessings and scriptures that bring encouragement, Discouragement should not be a part of our lives. Don't be discouraged. We should never be discouraged. The worst thing is that after a great move of God in our lives and the power of God leading and we can suddenly find the temptation that comes to get discouraged. Discouragement knows no limitation as far as Profession, gender, age, whether young or old, social economic status, whether poor or wealthy. See, if I had a, if I had money to just do this, then I'd be happy. No. If that's where your money, if that's where your happiness lies, then it's misplaced. My health. If I just if I just get over this in my life, 
physically, then I could be happy. Uh -uh. No, that's not true. I know people that struggle with the worst cases of health problems you could ever find, and they still have a joy and a presence of God in their lives that is just simply unbelievable, strong testimony of Jesus. Circumstances also bring discouragement. And here's the catchphrase. Things will not get better. That's what discouragement tells you. And then relationships. Relationships can bring discouragement. Discouragement takes away and diminishes our present satisfaction and the abilities of, of our lives. And it blinds our hope for the future. A loss of confidence and a loss of assurance before God. No matter who we are uh, in our circumstances, you don't have to be discouraged this morning. Today we want to shake off all the, all the discouragement. Shake it off because we believe in the Spirit of the Lord and that He is the Spirit of encouragement. Yes, he, is. he is the Spirit of encouragement. Yes, so shake off all the works of darkness. Encouragement in the Lord, not discouragement. Is there anything too hard for the Lord, my brother and my sister? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? No. What does the Bible say? There is nothing too hard for the Lord. Then why do we use that as an excuse? Well, I, I can't be happy because of it. I can't be encouraged because of that. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Genesis 18, 14. That's way over in, one of the, in the beginning book. Genesis 18, 14. And I have humble fingers this morning. <laughs> Eighteen fourteen. Is anything too hard for the Lord? I will return to you at the appointed time next year, and Sarah, speaking of Abraham's wife, will have a son. Right. Um. Abraham was 75, and Sarah was somewhere in, in, in her late 60s, maybe middle 60s. Past the time of childbirth, she was living under a cloud of depression, under a cloud of accusation that she somehow was not right with God because childbearing was a part and the sign of the blessing of God, and she had no children. They said, what is it wrong with you? What did you do? And that's what the enemy uses on it. Why aren't you happy? Look at you. Why can't you get, look at you. No. Jesus doesn't tell us to do it that way. Sarah was afraid, so she lied and said, I did not laugh. She, was, she laughed. And then she lied about it and said, I did not laugh. And the Lord said, yes, you did laugh. It's just, it just can't happen. And we know how that story goes. <laughs> they had sons. They had a family. Isaac, the promise, Messiah, came from a circumstance that looked like the curse of God on it. The Messiah, Jesus, was born in that lineage. Is anything too hard for the Lord? No. Jeremiah 32, 17. Ah, sovereign Lord, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arm. Nothing is too hard for you. Say that with me. Nothing, Nothing is, is too hard for you. Is. There is no promise too hard for God to fulfill. God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and then not fulfill? That's in Numbers 23, 19. 
Does he speak and not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? Absolutely not. There is no prayer too hard for God to answer. Yes. Call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. You don't know it all. Yes. Don't even think about that. Knowing it all. We don't. We live under his authority. We live under his life. We live under his blessings and they are abundant, folks. They're far greater than what we can produce in our own efforts. So stop trying to do it in your own strength. Trust in the Lord. Psalm 37, 3 through 5 says, Trust in the Lord and do good. This is what's on the overhead. Dwell in the land and feed on his, what? Faithfulness. Not on your mistakes. Not on your inabilities. Not on your failures. But feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Yes. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Wow. So is anything too hard for the Lord? Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things, unsearchable things that you do not know. You will receive what you ask for in prayer. Yeah. If you ask for it with all of your heart. And if you believe in it with all your heart. A man named Samuel F.B. Morris, inventor of the telegraph, remember Morse code? When he got stuck, he asked God for more light. This is his own words. When God wanted to bestow this gift on mankind, he had to use somebody. I'm just grateful that he chose to use me. Samuel Morris, inventor of the telegraph. Prayer is like a two-party check. You send it up, and then when if Jesus countersigns it according to God's will, then it's done. Amen. There's no problem too hard for God to solve. No problem too hard for God to solve. Don't say that nothing can change. Don't say that it's too big. Don't say I'm, I'm not able to get over this. Get over it. Yeah. Leave it in the hands of God. Not even barrenness of an old woman is a problem for God. Think of that. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will do this. A girl complains to her father who's a chef about her problems and, and it's like a carrot. It starts out strong but becomes soft and weak. Or like an egg that starts out tender and fragile and becomes hardened. It's like coffee beans changed the water they were put in into something good. We all face boiling water of adversity. The difference is how do you respond to that boiling situation? The same sun that hardens the clay <laughs> also melts the ice. No temptation has seized you except that which is common to man. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can stand under it. Don't say I'm not able. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Amen. D.L. Moody once said, I am only one, but I am one. I cannot do everything, but I can do something. And that which I can do by the grace of God, I will do. And God used him in a powerful way to bring revival all across America. D.L. Moody. There was one preacher that put it this way about revival in the church. If all the, he said, we would see revival if all the sleeping folk would wake up, if all the lukewarm folks would fire up, 
if all the dishonest folks will confess up, if all the disgruntled folks will pack up, and if all the depressed folks will cheer up, if all the estranged folks will make up, if all the gossipers will shut up, if all the true soldiers will stand up, if all the dry bones will shake up, if all the church members will pray up, then we can have revival. There's really not anything to stand between us and revival, folks. We're it. We're God's children. He is not slack concerning his promises in any way. We are his children. If you, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who call upon his name and ask him? There is no person too hard for God to save. No situation too big for God to overcome it and bring it under the direction of the Holy Spirit in your life. Surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save. Uh, that is Isaiah 59.1. Jesus came into the world to save sinners, 1 Timothy 1.15. Therefore, he is able to save completely those who come to God through him. <clears throat> Anything too hard for the Lord? No. As I said, discouragement takes away and diminishes our present satisfaction and abilities and blinds our minds. We want to shake off discouragement, <clears throat> shake it off totally from our lives. We got to believe the Spirit of the Lord. He is the Spirit of encouragement. You have to learn like David learned. As he says in the, in the words that he wrote, he encouraged himself in the Lord. Amen. Do it daily, encouraging yourself in the Lord. Yeah. Otherwise, your discouragement will conquer you. The people were discouraged because of the way they were going. It was God who was leading them. They were going his way, but discouragement began to set into the children of Israel and crept in. Discouragement is... I have a distaste for my present. I have a disgust for my past. And I have a distrust about my future. That's what discouragement really is. Right. Discouragement is ingratitude for yesterday's blessings. I'm kind of trying to give us a picture here of what can happen in a believer's life. Ingratitude for yesterday's blessings is discouragement. If you could just remember what God did for you yesterday... You would believe he can do that for you today. Yeah. Ingratitude is one way discouragement manifests in you. Also, it's indifference toward God's opportunity that he gives you for today. It's neglecting today if you're so settled on yesterday. God is saying all around you today is my presence and my provision. So you don't have to focus on the things of discouragement any longer. Hello? You do not have to focus on those things. So don't. Don't focus on what you can't do. Focus on what he can do. How do you know you're discouraged? When all you see is the failures and the harmful, threatening storm clouds around, you cannot see the remedy because of the problem. You cannot see the trees because of the forest. All you see is the despair, the hopeless, and not hope. You're discouraged when you look around, and all you can see is condemnation, criticism, only negatives. Discouragement is manifesting itself. I hate this job, discouragement tells you. I hate this house. I hate my circumstances. Discouragement is like a poison. Like a poisonous snake has bitten you. <clears throat> and injected its poison into you. For God to be able to do good things in our lives, we must defeat discouragement. He's calling us today to a new walk with him. Trust in the Lord and do good. Here's, here's how you do it. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And I want to give you one word the Lord gave me this week. Stop saying it's too hard, and start saying it's not too hard. 
This is not too hard to do what he says. If it was too hard, he never would have told you to do it. But the word of the Lord came to me this week and said it's not too hard. The Christian life is not too hard. The enemy wants you to stay away from those Christians. Stay away from that, that Holy Spirit. Stay away from the, the power of, the, of God in your life. Trust in the Lord. The enemy wants you to not trust in the Lord. He wants you to not do good. He wants you to not dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. To not delight yourself also in the Lord. He shall give you the desires of your heart. He doesn't want you to commit your way to the Lord. He doesn't want you to trust also in him. But I'm going to tell you, he's a liar. And it's not too hard to be a Christian. If I could just get that message across to us this, this morning, all of us, we'd get over thinking it's just too hard to do this. It's not too hard. Is anything too hard for the Lord? No. Nothing. There is no promise too hard for the Lord. Even in the midst of discouraging situations, it's not too hard. My wife has written a song called Strength of My Life. And I'm going to give it to you this morning. It's getting close to time, to, but we've still got a few minutes. Brother Peter, are you still back there? It's, it's the song, Strength of My Life. I'd like you to listen closely to the words that she wrote years ago, back in the 80s. She wrote this song, and some friends of mine, who's the man's wife, had a stroke several years ago. They traveled all across America singing the songs of my wife. They recorded 16 of her songs on album. They traveled with the Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship in some of the largest churches in America. They were on, they were on Praise TV. They, they did it all, folks, in those days. They crisscrossed this nation singing her songs. And he, he told me just this week, he said, well, since she had her stroke several years ago, and now it's gotten to the point where she cannot get off the couch. And he is her main caregiver. He fixes lunch, breakfast, supper, does the, does the dishes, does the housework. He does it all. He's a man of God, my friend, my, my college buddy, my friend in the Navy. My friend uh, in college, my friend in music, I sang with the group that he was a singer in. We called it the Tempos. And we were in, high, we were in college together. And now he's with his wife in, in the Dallas area. And every day they play this song, he said. And his wife sings it and just, just, just worships and cries out to God as they sing this song. Here it is. Strength of my life. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Turn it up, Peter. So with my strength, I will to live life to face every task of my day.
So, don't tell me it's too hard. It's not too hard to live like Jesus. Refreshed by your spirit that lives, your spirit that dwells in my heart. Thank you, babe. Those powerful lyrics of that song. And my friend plays it every day, and they sing it together. She can't sing anymore like she did. But her heart is singing. And they cry together, and they worship together as they sing this song every day. Don't tell me that God can't help you in your situation. Don't tell me that there's not power in the name of Jesus. Don't tell me that you cannot trust in the Lord. Don't tell me it's too hard. The Holy Spirit in us is what causes it to work in our lives. And he's calling each of us today to with a deeper walk with him, a deeper understanding of what he's come to bring. And he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Thank you, Father, for this message today. From the Holy Spirit. It's not too hard. That's the word. It's not too hard to be a Christian and to serve you and to follow you. And to live the spirit-filled life in the midst of any circumstance. Regardless of what it is, it's not too hard. You are walking with us. You give us strength every day. The beautiful words that you gave, babe, in this song. Refreshed by your spirit that dwells. Your spirit that lives. Your spirit that dwells. Your spirit that lives. In my heart, those refreshing times of being in the Spirit of God in His presence. So come, Holy Spirit, and minister to every person present today, those who are watching on, on a video, those who are in their homes, those who are right here with us today. Extend your healing and your ministry power in Jesus' name. If you're here this morning and you need to receive Jesus as Savior and Lord, it's just as simple as asking Him to come into your heart. You say, Father, I receive Jesus uh, into my life as my Savior and Lord. And I'm going to accept him as Savior. I'm going to make him the Lord of my life. And that means he's the boss. He comes in and rules in my life. Everything else comes under Jesus. Everything else must be filtered through Jesus Christ. He is my help in time of need. He is my healer. He is my soon coming king. He's the one that I worship. Everything that comes into my life must come through the filter of Jesus. You can pray it, and you can say, Father, I want to receive Jesus as Savior, Lord. I give you the control of my life right now. And he'll come in, and you'll find a new relationship with God like never before. We call it getting saved. It's finding Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life. So trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. If you're here this morning and you need prayer for other areas except for salvation, would you just raise your hand? I need help in, in a relationship. I need help physically. I need God to touch in this situation, that situation. It's to God that you're raising your hand. You're saying, I need prayer. And God sees that. And God sees that. And he will meet you there. He will meet you there at that point of release of your faith. Right now, Jesus, send the Holy Spirit to rest upon each of these and raise their hands. They're responding, Father, to the Spirit's call. Not to a preacher's call, but to the Spirit's call. They are responding to the voice of the Holy Spirit. And they're saying, come Holy Spirit, I need you. Come Holy Spirit now and help us walk through this time together. With you walking with me, Holy Spirit, nothing can conquer me. Nothing can be too hard for God with Jesus Christ walking with me. I'm going to walk out of this uh, situation victorious. I'm going to see victory. I'm going to see lives transformed. I'm going to be transformed in the midst of it all. And I'm going to serve you regardless. I'm going to serve you regardless. I'm going to accept you now into my heart. And then just take a deep breath and say, come Holy Spirit with me. Come Holy Spirit. Come on. Say it. Take a deep breath and say, come Holy Spirit of God. Come Holy Spirit of God and fill me now. The scripture says he breathed on them and they received the Holy Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. There was another song that we talked about today. Of the world, up 
night service this week. Come together for the worship and word on Wednesday night at 7. We'll see you then. And see you next Sunday. God bless you. Have an awesome day. We love you. God bless you, First Assembly.